Now, in this video, I'm going to take SQL command one step farther, and this one's just really cool to be able to show you. With SQL command, we've got one better than OSQL in that we can actually pass variables to our SQL command statements. Yep, you heard me right. For those of you who've ever screamed and begged for this, notice what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to create a script file that I'm going to call and run from SQL command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the root of my H drive that this uh, system is installed on, and I'm going to create a new text document. Okay, and then I'm going to immediately rename that ML script.sql. Then I'm going to open this and I'm going to edit it with Notepad. And I'm going to create a script. I'm going to say select and then notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a dollar sign and put column name. How about if I spell that right? Would that be good? Then notice I'll say from dollar tab name for table name, and then go execute the command. So notice what I've done. I've created a variableized transact SQL statement. Select dollar call name from dollar tab name or table name. And I'll save this. Now if you're new to transact SQL and you're new to SQL, this may be over here. This is for those who may be a little bit bored with some of the other stuff we're covered. It's a little extra for some of the folks who like this kind of stuff. So there's my script file. Notice it's on my H drive out here. And so now what I'll do is Start, run, open the command window. Now I want to run the SQL command functionality. And what I'm going to tell it is, okay, lowercase i, let me go back to something just a second here and get you up to speed. Let me get my help screen up here. So notice the uh, the lowercase i is uh, telling it that this is an input file. Okay, right here, this is an input file. So I'm going to call SQL command tell it to my input file and notice what I do here. I'm going to say h ml script.sql so that's where to go find the input file and then I'm going to pass it a variable and somewhere here you will see a lowercase v and I can't see it only because I'm looking for it. Ah here it is. Notice v is the variable. So I'll come down here and I'll put hyphen v and then in quotes, well, first of all, I will say call name equals, and the column name we're going to pull is actually named name. But that's confusing enough. And then I'll put my next one, tab name equals, and the table name is sys databases. I could spell and talk at the same time, this would go so much smoother. Now what's going to happen is when I execute this, SQL command is going to connect and by default it's going to do a trusted connection to the server that I'm on. So it's going to connect to Leesburg, trusted connection. It's going to look inside this file out on my H drive and it's going to run that command across that connection that it made and it's going to put in name for column, sys.databases for the table name and return the results. So it's going to give me a list of the databases on my server. So I hit enter and notice it goes out, it runs it, and it comes back. So notice what I've done now. I can pass different column names and table names to this one script and have this SQL command execution give me different results that's back. That is absolutely huge if you've ever used OSQL and wished you had more functionality. That's a way to use variables with SQL command. Go out and play with it and see what you can get happening in your batch files.